Hello everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a tutor with Check Tutors. The link to my profile is below. Today we're going to be talking about discounts on purchases of merchandise. So to start, we'll we'll use the perpetual system, and there's there's two systems: the perpetual and the periodic. Perpetual is probably the easiest. So we're going to start with that, and there's two ways you can record a purchase of inventory. You can either do it using the gross method or you can do it using the net method. We're going to go over both real quickly. So let's let's assume that we purchased 10 units on account on account main. We haven't paid for it yet for $20 per unit. We want to record the purchase of inventory. Under the gross method, we assume that any purchase discounts we may have we ignore it. We'll just record it for the initial cost to us. So in this case, 10 units times 20 or 200. So we want to record it for $200. To do that, we would just debit inventory for 200 and credit accounts payable for 200. So we're increasing inventory and we're increasing accounts payable. Now let's assume that we get a 2% discount on purchases if it's paid within 10 days. Let's say that this purchase was paid within 10 days. So our journal entry to record this, first we'd have to calculate the discount, which would just be 200 times 2%, so $4. We get $4 off our total cost. Um, so we would debit accounts payable for the initial amount we had it at, and that's 200. We would credit cash for 196 because we're paying 200 minus the $4, $4 discount, so we're only paying 196. And our balancing account is inventory so we're decreasing that by 200 minus 196 or four dollars um, because we took the discount so because of our discount our inventory is now only valued at 196 dollars as opposed to the initial 200 when we initially recorded it now let's assume that instead we didn't pay within the discount period our entry would be to just simply debit accounts payable and credit cash for 200 so we're reducing accounts payable and reducing cash. Now if we were instead using the net method, the net method is basically just assuming we're going to take the discount. So if we record the inventory and record the accounts payable at 96%, 98% of our cost, so um, uh, 200 minus 4, we record it at the 196. And we do that just we just have to debit inventory for 196 and credit accounts payable for 196. Now, assuming we paid within the 10 days and we do in fact get the discount, we could just debit our accounts payable and then credit our cash for 196. We wouldn't have to bother reducing inventory because we've already recorded inventory at the appropriate cost. But if we didn't pay within the discount period, we would have to do an adjustment for that. We would have to debit accounts payable for the amount we initially recorded at to remove that. We'd have to credit cash because we'd have to credit cash for 200 because we have lost a discount. So uh, 196 plus our $4 discount here, 200. And our balancing entry again is inventory. In this case, we'd be increasing inventory by four. So we'd have to debit that for four. That's, that's all it is for the perpetual system uh, for the gross and the net method. Um, if we move to discounts on purchases for the periodic system, it's a little, little more difficult. It's periodic system being we don't actively track inventory. We'll just uh, put all our purchases into a purchases account and at the end of the period take our beginning inventory plus purchases and subtract whatever ending inventory is and that would be our uh, cost of goods sold for the period so we don't actively look and see what our inventory balance is we're not constantly adjusting it and so let's say same problem 10 units of purchase on account for $20 to record this instead of debiting inventory for 200 we would debit purchases for 200 and we would credit accounts payable so the accounts payable aspect at least stays the same keep in mind this is the gross method so we're recording it assuming that we don't get the discount now let's assume we do get the two percent discount because we paid within ten days we would want to reduce our accounts payable account to zero so we debit that for the two hundred 
and we're only paying $196, so we can only credit cash for $196. Our balancing account is purchase discounts, which um, reduces purchases. Instead of crediting purchases, we're crediting a, I guess, an account that uh, does the same thing, but indirectly. At the end of the period, we would eventually have to, we would take our purchases and we would uh, subtract our purchase discounts to get our our total net purchases and so purchase discounts is unique to the the gross method you wouldn't see it in the net method it's an income statement account um, now let's say we don't pay within the discount period well then we're just simply doing the debit to accounts payable 200 and credit to cash for 200 we don't have to mess with the purchases account because it already has the correct balance in it. But if we were doing the met net method, for instance, we would debit purchases for 196 um, as opposed to inventory under the perpetual system and credit accounts payable for 196 Now let's assume that we get the discount. That entry becomes pretty simple because we've already recorded at the price we paid for it. So we would just debit cash or credit cash and then debit accounts payable for 196 If however we didn't pay within the discount period we would once again get rid of our accounts payable balance by debiting it and since we didn't pay within the discount period we now owe four dollars more so the total cash we're paying is 200 uh, as opposed to 196 and our balancing account is the purchase discounts lost here this is an expense on the income statement so it um, reduces our income by four dollars in this case um, and this purchase discounts here is unique to the net method you wouldn't see it with the gross method just because you wouldn't you wouldn't have a purchase discounts loss ever on the gross method you would only have a, a purchase discounts so for, for the net method this isn't too too bad either and once again at the end of the period we would take our purchases and add to it any purchase discounts lost to get our total uh, payments for merchandise if we didn't if we didn't take the discount within the discount period and this was our only uh, inventory transaction then our total purchases would be 196 plus the purchase discount lost of four if uh, we did pay within the discount period and this was our only uh, merchandise purchase then our total purchases would be the 196 and with the gross method, similar concept, our total purchases would be 200 minus 4 here, so 196. Or uh, if we didn't pay within the discount period, it would just be the 200, and that would be our total purchases. So I hope that explains the, the basics of discounts on purchases. Um, I think more often than not, you'll see the gross um, periodic system being used as opposed to the perpetual system being used in your accounting problems but just keep in mind that if you think of purchases as inventory you should be able to understand the basics of it and uh, keep in mind that purchase discounts and purchase discounts lost are used instead of purchases and instead of inventory in this system and you should be fine. If you have any questions, once again, my profile link is below. Hope you have a good day.